D-Lab in the shop with another project. This time I've got an RCA Victor. It's the chassis RC618B out of a console radio. So it's an AM FM tuner with input for a phonograph. This thing came in the shop dead. We're going to go through it and hopefully fix it. So stay tuned. So initially when the radio came into the shop it would turn on but it had absolutely no output. I went through and I verified the tubes and found that two tubes were incorrect. They're supposed to be six AU6s and a couple of them were flipped and it turned out that there was an AV6 in the place of an AU6. So luckily I got online, I found the chassis layout and I had the tubes in there the way they're supposed to be. And when I did that, the FM came alive. And so for reference you can see I just took a pencil and wrote next to each tube location what tubes belong in there. This one's kind of unique. It's got this little preamp tube that hangs off the back. I think that's pretty cool. But anyway, at this point, I have FM working. You can hear it, but it is garbled. When I go to AM, she's dead in a doornail. And I think I discovered why. Let's take a look underneath. So we'll take a guided tour of the bottom side of the RCA. As you can see, she's full of those old wax caps, okay? The ones I can't stand. This one here is dripping. You can kind of see the wax goobing off of her. Huh? So obviously the first thing that I do is I just change them all out because I'm going to do it anyway. So before we do much troubleshooting, they're all coming out. But the other thing I was wondering was, why is the FM trying to work and the AM is completely dead? Well, upon inspection, if you look under this resistor, you'll see another resistor sitting right there. And he's broke. See that lead? It's busted right in half. Obviously something hit it in the past. That's a 22 meg resistor. And I found, by looking at the schematic, it goes to the AM detector tube. So we're going to swap that first and see if the AM comes to life. So now you can see the lead that used to be in that resistor. Okay, I'm going to clip this guy out of here and get the new one in. New resistors in place and I use just some little J-hook connections. So I pretty much cleaned the old leads of the resistor that was there, crimped them over, and soldered in the new resistor right Let's see if she works. Alright, so swapping the resistor made no difference. Still, no AM. Got it? FM, no AM. So, next step. I'm going to change all those caps because they're famous for being troublemakers and we'll see if it comes to life then. If not, we'll just keep going. Okay, here we go. Time to change all these wax caps. I went through and did a partial inventory. I have most of them here. So these will go in there. So as you can see, this would be a little tedious adventure. My best word of advice is do one cap at a time. So in this case, how about this guy right here, okay? So I clip the leads nearest to the cap. Remove each cap, change them one at a time, and move on. In this case, we're starting with a 0.01 microfarad cap. So the same as that resistor that we just replaced, I take an X-Acto knife and I clean off the old leads of the little stubs left over from the previous capacitor. Okay. Once those are clean, I take a pair of long nose pliers I put a little J-hook in that lead. Then I take the new cap, I also make it a little J. And that's going to go in there. Crimp them and then solder them. So there's our first cap installed taking place of this old Snozoramus. Okay. Now, a lot of people say, well, how come you do the little crimp and solders? Why don't you just go ahead and solder right to the tube socket? Well, you know what? You can do that. But it takes about triple the time. If this was a Macintosh amp and somebody wanted to pay for me to really go to those extremes, I would. But this thing's worth about 50 bucks. So do the math. I'm going to continue changing out these caps. There's no reason to bore you with every one I put in. I'll show you the final product. And let's see if that AM comes to life. See if we get lucky. 
All right, update for you. I've got uh, about half of the caps replaced. Been working on it for a couple hours. It's a little more uh, intense than what I thought. But I got the bright idea. I thought, you know, I've changed all these caps. Maybe I should see if possibly AM's working. Well, here is FM. And we know that worked before, right? Now here's AM. Look at there, we got some noise. I didn't have that before. And we tune around. Got a station! So you see, sometimes just changing those caps out can make you lucky. In this case, we're on the right track. I'm going to continue going on this, but I just wanted to give you an update. It's looking good. So finally, all those wax caps are out of here. And what I'm doing right now is I'm checking just the audio amplifier section. So I'm going into the phono input and I'm injecting a tone with the old Heathkit audio generator. Let's take a look at the scope. We'll see if she's clean. It looks great. So I'm going to take a mission complete on this little radio. So now you know how I spend my weekends at D-Lab. This is just a hobby, people. I don't do this for a living. I just enjoy working on radios. So here it is. It's playing FM. Right? And then, that AM that wasn't working. There she is. So I'm sure the owner would be happy. So if you want to fix some of these old radios, the main thing is, is patience and look for the obvious. And there was a lot of obvious in this one, wasn't there? Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you again.